Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar um, brought to you by Member Solutions. Today's webinar is titled, Don't Let Your Martial Arts School Become Your Prison. And we're happy to have one of the most well-respected teachers in the industry with us today, Mr. Bill Storm. Mr. Storm is an expert in the field of martial arts marketing. He holds the rank of black belt in two styles and is currently working on his third in the art of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. He's also a part of the Member Solutions Business Advisory Team. Today, he'll share strategies to make your school more profitable, while also freeing up your time so that you don't have to sacrifice your personal life to run your business. If you follow his advice, you'll be able to take some time off to delegate that work to other people and know that your business will continue to run smoothly. If you have any questions for Mr. Storm during the webinar, please type them into the questions box, which is located on the control panel on the right-hand side of your screen. Mr. Storm, thank you for joining us. Hey, Miranda. Thanks so much for uh, having me on today. Uh, I always enjoy sharing this topic, so uh, hopefully everyone will get a lot out of it. Uh, if you do have any questions, just jot them down. I'll be happy to answer any of those at the end, and then certainly uh, if you need to reach out to me at the end, I'll have my contact information in case you need to speak about anything that pertains uh, personally to your own school. So uh, without further ado, I'll get right into the presentation. It'll be about 20 minutes, and then we'll get into our Q&A from there. All right, so over the past 10 years, I've been coaching people full time, but my experience, especially as an instructor, goes, uh, goes uh, back into the 80s. So uh, I've pretty much been there, done that, and got the t-shirt, and I'll share some of my frustrations along the way, so uh, possibly you'll identify with some of them. So here's just a few questions or a few things that I've heard people say to me over the years, okay? Um, the first thing that I heard from people is they say, geez, you know what? I opened my school because I love teaching martial arts and I thought it'd be a great, uh, great business, but now I work even more than I used to. I feel like I'm trapped. I feel like it, it's become a prison for me. So first question, do you ever feel like you can never take a weekend off? I hear this one all the time. Um, I'll have an event down here in South Florida to do some training and I'll invite people to come to it and they're like, well, you know, I, I just can't shut down the school. I, ca I can't get away uh, in order to be able to make that event. Second one, do you feel like you can't afford to take a vacation or you won't be able to pay, pay your bills if you do? Uh, there's nothing worse than that. I mean, that's definitely a prison when you've opened a business with the intent of having it create a better lifestyle for yourself. And now instead of having that lifestyle for yourself, you're stuck. And, you, you know, now you're working 24-7, 365 days a year. Not fun. Number three, do you feel that your staff just can't do it as well as you do? Uh, this one I hear all the time. You know, my staff just isn't good enough at doing this. I, I just need to be there. I just need to be able to do it myself. So instead, you're spending countless hours trying to accomplish just that. Uh, number next four, do you wake up anxious and frustrated, wondering how you're possibly going to get it all done? This one, I'll tell you, uh, on a weekly basis, sometimes I feel more like a psychiatrist than I do a business coach because a lot of it is emotional. I mean, you're doing something when you're running a school that uh, other people uh, simply can't do. Most businesses don't even make it uh, after the first couple of years. Luckily, with, as martial artists, we have discipline and we have perseverance and you know we stick to it until we do it and we're working really hard at it, but we don't want to have that uh, feeling of being anxious and frustrated and having it affect our, our, our physical health and our mental health. This is a huge one. Is your spouse unhappy about the number of hours that you're working? If you're neglecting your family because uh, of your business and you just feel like you can't get away, now the purpose for having the business in the first place has escaped you completely. Okay, So we have to really consider all of these things and think about what we're going to do to make sure that we're not trapped by this. And this is the last one, and this one was a big one to me. Are you missing your kids' games, concerts, or other activities? I know that when I was a kid, uh, my parents weren't always able to attend a lot of my, my activities. As a matter of fact, my parents were uh, divorced early on, so uh, I, when I was living with my mother, you know, she was working two, two jobs just trying to make ends meet. So she wasn't able to uh, attend different functions and things like that that I had all the time because she was busy uh, trying to make a living to put food on the table. To me, that was, uh, that was something that was very painful to me, and I made a commitment to myself when I had children that I was never uh, going to do that. And, and I, thankfully, uh, I've 
I've been able to do that throughout our entire life. Matter of fact, my wife and I made a commitment um, that we would make sure that we didn't miss any of those things, and and we uh, set it up to where I was able to work and she was able to uh, stay home and, and raise the kids the right way. My daughter just graduated from high school. Uh, my son is uh, going to be a sophomore in high school, and and uh, luckily we've been able to enjoy that time. But that's because I did some pre-planning and thinking to make sure that the the business that I was in wasn't going to be my prison. Okay, so. Here is the ladder to freedom, but in order to understand where you're at, you have to understand the three levels of a business. The first level is when you have no control and you have absolutely no freedom. This is really when you're a startup, okay, and everybody goes through this. So you're just opening the doors, you're, you know, you've got, uh, you're trying to get together funds, and you've got these big dreams, and you're excited about the whole thing, so you're just putting in the effort 24-7. At this point, your whole family is usually on board because it's this new venture and you've got this, you know, ideas in your head of how amazing it's going to be, uh, you know, for yourself and your family. So that's level one. Level two is where most people get stuck. This is where you have control, but you still don't have any freedom. So, yes, the business works and it functions, but only as long as you're there. I had a client uh, fairly recently that got in a, a very successful school. I mean, he was, he was doing great. Uh, the challenge was, though, is that he got in a motorcycle accident, and that basically took him out of his school uh, for almost a year, and it pretty near collapsed his entire business. Luckily, he did have uh, someone on staff that was able to step up, and I did some coaching with them to help keep them on track. But there's uh, only control, but there's no freedom there, okay? So we don't want to be in a situation where something happens to us and the business collapses or we can't break away to go on vacation or else the business falls apart that particular month. Again, this is where most of us get stuck and the reason we get stuck is because we don't really know anybody to help us guide us uh, in order to get to the next level which is level three which is total control in, in total freedom. So now this is where you own the business instead of it owning you. And I'm going to give you an example of, uh, of a friend of mine that uh, runs a very successful level three business. I really think uh, he's living the dream because he's teaching martial arts uh, just like he dreamed about, but he's doing it in such a way that he's not a slave to his business and he's able to uh, be there when he wants to be there and not be there uh, when he doesn't. I'll, I'll get to him in, in just a bit. Okay, so I love this uh, this imagery of like the Avengers or uh, years ago there was the like the Justice League right with all the different superheroes and what I mean by that is you have to team up with the right people any superhero on their own is amazing but when you match them with other superheroes and they join forces they become unstoppable and this is where most of us get caught because what we are is maybe you're a superhero uh, in the making and, and I and I call you that as a superhero because you have to be a leader. You have to have something special about you in order to be able to own a business and, and run your school. So maybe you don't see yourself that way, but you definitely have something about you that's special that uh, allows you to take charge. The challenge is, is that we get caught up uh, with trying to get people that aren't superheroes at all. We're trying to get people um, that have little or no skills to do the things that we need them to do in order to make our business grow and we call that our team. Well that's not the kind of team that I'm talking about. I'm talking about teaming up with other people that are really professional and high powered at, at what they do to help us achieve our go up goals. Okay, So in order to team up first you have to clarify some things. The first thing you need to do is you need to have a clear vision of what your business looks like when it's finished. This is, this is a big deal because the definition of success is different for everybody. For one person, success might be that you need to have a thousand students. That's their idea of what their business looks like when it's finished. For someone else, it's not that at all. They may want to have um, a student body of 150 students with a student value of um, you know, $150 per student per month and they're grossing $22.5 and that produces the kind of income that they want in order to be able to enjoy their life. Uh, maybe they have a spouse that also makes a, uh, uh, a pretty decent living. So their combined income allows them the freedom to do the things that they want to do. So you really need to know what that looks like for you. And I just had a, a conversation recently with a, a school owner. He's doing about $40,000 a month and he's um, he started out 
at uh, I think he was doing around twenty five thousand when I started working with him, and now he's up around forty thousand dollars a month gross, and uh, I'm really impressed by him. He's just a, an amazing person. But he's a young guy, and he's just about to get married. So I had a conversation with him, and I said, Ryan, I said, listen, you need to tell me before we go any further, what does your life uh, look like if it's operating exactly like you want it? What's your life going to be like with your spouse? Are you going to have kids? What kind of home do you want to have? How much do you enjoy your free time? Um, what is it that really drives you? And we really... Uh, uh, step back for a minute and created a vision board of exactly what he wanted so we could work the numbers backwards and that's a very important first step. The next thing is you need to know what your strengths are and you also need to determine what your weaknesses are. Okay, Everybody's been given certain talents and your the, the talents that you've been uh, uh, God given are, are for a purpose and it's your job to use those strengths uh, to serve other people and then your weaknesses, this is where it comes into looking for somebody to help you that um, has uh, complementary strengths that can be the yin to your yang, if you will. Okay, So this is a phrase uh, that uh, you probably have heard before, but it really does take teamwork to, to, take, uh, to make the dream work. So let me just give you an example of... Uh, somebody who I feel is ultra successful uh, running a level three business and it's it's my good friend uh, Sheehan Craig Haley uh, he runs a school down here in South Florida he and I have been training together since the 80s and then uh, we had moved apart from each other I hadn't seen him in 20 some odd years and then when I moved down here to South Florida uh, we got back together again and uh, I'm just so I'm impressed by by him as a person and how he set up his business so uh, Craig has approximately 400 students. He's doing an average gross of about $60,000 per month. He has one program. Okay, everybody starts with a uh, starts uh, with a white belt on, and they're headed towards uh, getting their black belt and beyond. Craig really expects people to be with him for uh, 10 years or better because he creates that kind of culture, uh, living that black belt lifestyle. So it's really interesting because Craig's overhead is extremely low. He's eliminated what uh, we call, we refer to as speed bumps. Anything that causes a, a, a slowdown in the business process or anything that causes any kind of challenge with a, with a student or a, a student or a student parent, all of those things have been eliminated. So he's running very fundamental, simple systems. He's got one very clear vision and goal. And what this has allowed him to do is it's allowed him to be extremely profitable, but he's also free to do the things that he wants to do. So, for example, uh, in August, he and I are going to travel together to go uh, to an event, and we're going to get to actually train, right? We're going to get to actually train together and experience that together, and he doesn't have to worry about it. So regardless of what's going on at, at his school, all of those things are set up properly and it's handled. Now, what are his strengths? Craig is an extremely good people person, fantastic instructor, and he's actually a great teacher of teachers. So he really focuses on those parts of his business. Now, I don't want to call him a weakness because it's not a weakness. He's very good at everything. However, um, his preference is... Uh, to focus on retention and refocus on customer service in teaching and having a great floor, he doesn't love to do a lot of the marketing end of things because it's so time consuming. So what did he do? Well, what he did is he turned to me and he says, hey, you know, I realize that your strength is in marketing. So how can we work together and how can we make this happen? So he and I actually sat down and we went through this whole plan and we mapped out all of the things that I could do for him and why this has worked out so well is because he doesn't really have to babysit uh, me. He doesn't have to worry about it. He just knows that I know what to do and that I've got it handled. And of course um, the results uh, are very measurable and specific for him every month and we review it and it's actually fun so now instead of it being a burden now it's actually fun because we get to see how much we can do and, and uh, set some set some uh, you know some outrageous goals and also re realistic goals but also some outrageous goals that we can shoot for and uh, it just makes it a lot of fun so now why does this work for him well the other thing he does is he likes to uh, he likes his time off all he uh, time off as well. So he was just down in the the Florida Keys over the uh, the uh, Memorial Day weekend, and he was 
uh, basically off the grid for about four or five days. Well, while he was gone, everything kept functioning. His marketing uh, plan and system kept working. So when he got back, he had prospects and leads and things like that to follow up on and things didn't fall apart. So that's where the teaming up part becomes so important. Now the last point here is uh, a mentor is a must. Now there's a lot of people who want to um, be seen or be heard, especially on the internet. So sometimes Facebook is, is a good thing and sometimes it's actually horrible. But sometimes what happens is, is we get caught up listening to advice from other people, but a lot of that advice is coming from people who haven't really achieved what it is that you're trying to achieve. So it's basically like a level two person giving advice to another level two person. Well, if you're always going around in that loop, you're never going to be able to get to level three. So if you have a, a mentor that you're working with, you have to really make sure that the mentor that you're working with has been able to achieve that level three type of a business so they can guide you and, and direct you and, and pull you up into that level. Because I, I will tell you this, when you do reach that level three type of a business, it, it really does uh, feel amazing. And what's more exciting about it is is the more it, once you get into that level three mindset it's amazing that you actually end up making more money you stress less you don't have as much anxiety and you actually have more time it makes absolutely no sense in, in the rational mind that if you are more successful that you have more time but that's that's actually what happens um, a good friend of mine also Paul Garcia and I talk about this all the time Paul does you know a hundred thousand plus something gross every single month, yet he's got plenty of time to come down here. He's got a condo in, in Florida that he comes to, to visit and we get together and he's completely relaxed and calm and everything is, you know, systems are in place and, uh, you know, it, everything just works accordingly. So all of these things, I, I would really invite you to just jot these things down and answer these questions for yourself and ask yourself, do I really have a clear vision? Um, with it, without clear vision, right, the people perish. That's a quote out of the Bible. It's a really good uh, thing for you to think about. If you don't have a clear vision, you can't expect that you're going to be able to move uh, closer to it if you don't know where you're going in the first place or where you want to go in the first place. Then really look at your strengths and weaknesses. Be honest with yourself of what those are. And then start to look for other people that are pros in that area that can help you achieve your goals. Don't look at uh, teaming up with somebody as... Uh, something that um, is going to be stressful to you because it'll be the exact opposite. When you actually are working with somebody who knows what they're doing and they're motivated to help you, it's exciting and it, it really does help um, speed up your growth a lot. And then again, last, you know, before you before you start working with somebody, find out what their credentials are and see if they've actually achieved what you're what you're after. Um, and not just financially either. Uh, everyone, make sure they're living the kind of lifestyle that, that you want to live because there are some people that can be very financially successful, but their lifestyle itself that they're living um, isn't in par with it. They may be like a workaholic 24-7. Their entire family life is shot, and that's not really something you want to model either. They have a part of it, but they don't have the whole, they don't have the whole thing. All right. Now, here's a reality check. Uh, Jim Rohn said this, and I just love this. If you want to have more, you have to become more. And the first thing you have to do is you have to become very aware of this. And, and I'm, I'm going to be very straightforward about this. Uh, maybe you don't agree with me, but in my experience, this is absolutely true. It's not your competition. I don't care who your competition is. Competition uh, in the United States of America is good. It makes you sharper and it raises the awareness of martial arts in your community. So it's not your competition that's holding your back. It's not the economy. I've been through ups and downs. I've seen it all. And amazingly, during the, during the recession, uh, the schools where the person was very well trained and they were constantly improving themselves, not only did survived, but they actually thrived. They actually did better. Where some of the smaller uh, schools where they just weren't willing to change or willing to learn, ended up folding and collapsing and going out of business. So it's not the economy. It's also, it's not that your spouse isn't supportive. Sometimes your spouse is, is the best uh, sounding board that you can have in your ear to basically saying, hey, listen, you're out of whack here with, with, with our lifestyle and our lifestyle together. You need to pay attention and you need to do something a little bit different. 
It's also not your staff's fault. Your staff only learns from you, right? It all starts with the top. So if your staff's not uh, doing a good job, you either have the wrong people for the wrong seats on the bus, which means you have the wrong kind of staff member for that particular position, or you just haven't trained them well enough. You haven't taken the time to, to groom them and possibly expecting too, too much for them uh, too soon. Okay, so this basically sums it up. 100% of the reason that you're not at level three is because of something that you need to do differently. And the only way you're gonna be able to tell what that is is to spend some time in quiet and think about it. Think about what you're doing that doesn't work. And if there's something that's not working and you continue to do it over and over and over again, that's the definition of an insanity. So we don't wanna be considered insane. So instead, we need to write down the things that aren't working and now we need to do something completely different. Okay, and that's going to take you becoming more. It's going to take some study. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some perseverance. And it's going to take you reaching out to somebody to learn what it is that they do that got them over that same obstacle. Most of the time, the guys who are really successful in the industry have gone through the same exact challenge as you did. The only difference between you and them is that they reached out and they found out what it was that they needed to do to become better at their craft and, and how to get past that obstacle. Okay, so if you don't remember anything else uh, from the entire presentation, remember this. You need to own it and then you need to change. Okay, one more time, you need to own it and then you need to change. So I go back to that original list. Do you feel like you can never take a weekend off? If that's true, own it. Why can't you ever take a weekend off? Is it because you overpacked your schedule uh, where you have classes Monday through Sunday or Monday through Saturday? Do you have to have a class on Saturday? How many people actually attend class on Saturday? Maybe it's a lot, maybe it's a few. Okay, uh, how about Friday? Do you have a lot on Friday? Could you have somebody else um, teaching that class? Could you have extra help or makeup on Saturdays? Something like that so you can take that time off. So you need to understand that you've created your own prison walls and now you have to, you have to figure out how you're gonna get out of it. So the first thing you need to do is you need to realize that it's your fault, so you're gonna own it and then you're gonna do something different to change. If you're not sure what to do, that's where you can call me and we'll talk through it and we'll figure out what the deal is and then we'll come up with some proposed solutions that might, you, might make you feel comfortable. Same thing, do you feel like you can't afford to take a vacation or you won't be able to pay your bills? This is a huge one. Most of the time when I interview somebody and I ask them about their systems and procedures, they have uh, either they learn the systems and procedures and they veered away from them, they're completely doing it differently than what they learned, or they don't have a system in place at all. Okay, here's a perfect example. Uh, somebody who enrolls somebody on a new program and they let them limp in the door with a 30-day free trial program and then they just throw them on a month-to-month -month type of uh, a payment schedule. So in a, a professionally run school, let's just say a, a school like um, Craig Haley's, let's, let's just say that he charges uh, $199 up front and then he has uh, monthly payments from there. Well, if he signs up 10 new members a month and he collects $199 a month, he's basically collected $2,000 in, in revenue uh, and he's written what we call gold paper, somebody who's committed to the program. School owner B lets somebody limp in the door for 30 days for free, so they haven't collected any money at all and they don't have any kind of real commitment and then they start on a monthly payment. So Craig is taking in $2,000 a month times 12 months out of the year is $24,000 where school owner B enrolls the same amount of people but takes no uh, commitment up front, so he's collecting zero dollars over the course of the year. So Craig got $20,000, $24,000 a year that he can use to pay for a vacation or pay his bills, and school owner B doesn't. Okay, so sometimes you need to understand that you need to own it. That's your mistake. You're not following a system, so you need to change it, and you need to model somebody who's doing it correctly, and then you'll get the kind of similar results so you can enjoy the same kind of lifestyle that they do, okay? So again, you can go through the rest of these, and you really have to uh, just sit down and identify what it is that you feel isn't quite working, and understand that it's something that you need to change, and then we can talk through and walk through on how you're going to start making those changes in order to be able to live that lifestyle that you want to live. Okay.
So here's a couple of things that I wanted to offer to you. Again, success is a choice, so I want you to choose widely, or wisely here. Here's my email address, pretty easy to remember, right? Billstorm at billstorm.com. Uh, I've got a book, it's in a PDF format, and it's a book that I read that was passed on to me uh, from someone else, and I really enjoyed it. And it talks about level one, two, and three businesses, and it, and it really did help me organize my thoughts and help me escape the kind of prison that I created for, for myself with my own business. So I'll, I'll be happy to send that to you if you'd like it. Just shoot me an email and then I'll respond and, and attach the PDF to it. And then number two, if you want to chat, let me know that too. We can set up some one-on-one -on -one time, you know, complimentary, no charge for it. But basically what I'll do is I'll just sit and I'll listen. And you tell me a little bit about your business, um, what kind of things are uh, holding you back or causing you to be anxious or not allowing you to live that uh, the lifestyle that you're really um, you know looking to live and then I'll give you some ideas and some proposed solutions so we can remove what um, Craig and I refer to as the speed bumps and those speed bumps generally will cost you money and they really keep you from spending the kind of time with friends and family uh, that you that you'd like so really simple uh, this is your opportunity to change your life for the better now it's up to you to to reach out and make some changes. All right, Miranda. <laughs> okay, Bill, thank you so much. Great presentation. Thanks. Um, we do have a few questions here, and I'll remind everyone that if you do have a question for Mr. Storm, please type it into the questions box now so he can go ahead and get that answered for you today. Um, he has a lot of great expertise, so it's a really great opportunity for you to get your questions answered now. Um, so one of the questions is, um, do you have any tips for choosing the right staff members? You alluded that that's very important. Yes. Um, actually, one of the things that I've found really helpful is to have them do a one of those DISC uh, personality profile tests. And it's, it's really interesting. I, I believe that I actually have a a link I could email you for that also. I think my daughter actually just went through that uh, as a senior in high school. They gave, they gave all the kids this test. And what the test was was to really let them know, hey, based on your answers to these questions, this is who you really are. Okay, This is who you really are as a person, so you're probably best suited for these kinds of jobs or these kinds of fields. And it was amazing because I took the test myself and when I read the results, I was like, wow, that is exactly who I am. And it's nice because it also tells you what you're not good at and it tells you what you should avoid. And when I read the things that I should avoid, I thought to myself, you know what, those are exactly the things subconsciously that I try to avoid all the time because I just don't like them. So, uh, a, a personality profile test like that is super. You can give it to your employees and that way you can see if they're suited for the job. Here's a good example. Uh, if you were trying to have a staff member try to do marketing for you and they just don't have that in them, you're gonna, you're gonna drive yourself absolutely crazy. You have to have a passion for marketing. Um, good example, when I was 18 years old I was a floor instructor and I was a good floor instructor but for some reason, I wanted to be a program director. I don't know why. I was just called to do that job. I, I just wanted to get up there and do that. And I was finally given the opportunity to become one, and that's when I really came into my own. Um, and I I just loved it. I don't know why. I used to like to go out and do mall booths, and I, back then, you know, we didn't have all the, the technology we did today, so I used to have to put my arms around like a big huge television and walk it into the mall, stick it on a table, go back out to the car, get a VHS player, bring that in, and then pop in a VHS tape of like uh, my black belt exam. And I would sit there and I would play that and people would stop and look and I would talk and I was so motivated about the martial arts that you couldn't help but pick up on my enthusiasm for it and that became my thing. Now if, if I had been forced to stay just teaching classes back to back, I would have pulled my hair out of my head. So I think that would be a, a very good thing for you to do, and I'd be happy to send you that link. Great. Thank you. Another question, um, you talked about evaluating your strengths and weaknesses, and you said you have to be honest with yourself. This is a difficult thing. So are there any tools that you would recommend for helping people with this process? Uh, again, that... that that this personality profile type of a test will tell you uh, exactly what those things are. So I think you know that same answer would apply. However, 
for me, it's also that quiet time. And if you find yourself avoiding certain things, like if, if here's a good example. One of my clients told me, he says, Bill, he says, I've got prospects. He goes, I've got people that are interested in my program. And he said, I'm so scared of them telling me no that I can't even pick up the phone. It feels like, a, like it's a concrete block, so heavy. So I told him, I said, listen, my, that's, that's not your job. You need to go out on the floor and you need to do your thing. I've seen you teach. You're a fantastic floor instructor. That is not your thing. If you don't want to pick up that phone and you're avoiding it, uh, like the plague, you're never going to get yourself to do it consistently. So you just have to take some time to kind of be quiet and assess the things, uh, jot down the things that you try to avoid every day or the things that you try to do last all the time, and those are usually the things that you're not good at or that you don't really like. Then look at the things that you really do enjoy doing and where you feel like you can give the best service to your students, so focus on, on those things. Um, the particular business that I do uh, right now has been really awesome because I love marketing stuff. So I've been marketing for school owners that just don't really like marketing so they can just focus on the floor. So it makes me happy because I get to do what I like to do and it makes them happy because they get what they like to do. Now there are some people that are the exact opposite. There are some people that really enjoy the marketing also and they, they don't really want to be on the floor. So they in turn need to look for somebody that uh, has got a dynamic personality uh, on the floor. So th that's that's how I would start. Thanks. Um, sure. We have time for one more question. Um, you also alluded to the idea of goal setting. Um, you want the, your goals to be realistic but also somewhat aspirational, um, which is kind of managing the two parts of that. Um, could you maybe speak a little more to that? Okay. So I always start with what do I want what do I want my business to do for me living living life isn't about having your business living your life is having a business that provides you the income and the freedom to do the things that, that you that you like to do so you need to identify what are those things that you like to do how do you want your life to be if you woke up every morning uh, and you could spend your your time in any particular way and you would feel really accomplished and you would feel good about it uh, and you, you know, you just felt like it was, uh, you know, you just created an amazing life for yourself. That's what you have to start with, and then you work backwards from there. Now, that being said, you know, if you want to own a helicopter, <laughs> then you know you're going to have to be a little bit more aggressive with your with your business goals, and you're probably cut out for that. You probably have that kind of entrepreneur entrepreneurial spirit where that excites you, and that's what you want to go after. But if your idea of uh, the best day ever is to be able to spend some time in the outdoors and go fishing or something like that. Well, perhaps you don't need to make a million dollars a year in order to live that kind of lifestyle that you want to live. So now what we do is we work backwards and we say, okay, well, based on the kind of lifestyle that I want to live, right, how much money is that going to take? So once I know how much money that's going to take, now I can work the formula backwards and I can say, okay, based on the lifestyle I want to live, I need 127.6 students and I need it to generate this much money uh, every month in order for me to, to live the lifestyle that I want to live. And again, that's something that I can work with you so you can really uh, fine tune that number and figure out an exact plan of how you can actually achieve that number and live that kind of lifestyle. Thank you. Welcome. We have one actual, I'll take this one last question. Um, there seems to be some interest in the book you mentioned that mm -hmm. helped you um, escape your prison. Um, they're asking what the title is. And I, I believe you said that if, if people email you, that you'll send them actually a copy of the book. That's, is that correct? Yeah. 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 Just shoot me an email and I'll send you a copy. I'll send you a copy of the book. I think it's called... Um, uh, uh, building a business, not a job. I think that's the. I think that's the title of it. Okay, great. Thank you. So Welcome. again, that's Bill Storm at BillStorm.com. The easy email address. Just please shoot him an email. He'll get back to you on that book. Right. Uh, and thank you. I think that's uh, all we have time for questions. Um, Bill, if you could go to the final slide, I want to make sure we share with everyone our contact information. Um, so again, 
feel free if you have further questions for Mr. Storm to email him or visit his website, give him a call. Um, he has graciously agreed to continue to answer all of your questions and work with you on any um, strategic issues you might have. Um, and also, if you'd like to learn more about Member Solutions, you can, of course, contact us as well. Um, our email is listed there and our phone number. You can learn about our billing services, our software solutions, and our consulting and support that we provide, like this webinar. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Um, I hope everyone has a great day. And again, Bill, thank you so much. Hey, Miranda, thanks so much for having me. <laughs> All right. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you.